Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines 2. Now, in the previous video, we created our first district and built out a brand new one for our college, complete with shops, amenities, parking, and some surrounding residential areas. We also unlocked post, telecom towers, and revamped our bus routes. So there was just lots of things to do and add to our growing town. Today is no different. After revamping and renaming all the districts and roads to just make sense with each other, we'll be expanding our residential area further south and laying the foundations for our rail network. While that is the main focus for today, there's again just lots of small things to tend to in order to help traffic, fill the gaps in our zoning, and just keep up with the demand for our various services. So let's begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's good to be back here in the region of Blackwater. I'm actually super happy. I don't know, there's something about just coming back to the game, being in the world again, seeing the sunset here. Even though it's only 2 p.m., it's kind of coming up to winter, the sun's low in the sky. It's very chill. It makes me very happy to be back. And I just want to quickly say sincere apologies for going so long with that episode. For those who are watching actively along with the releases, it's been about two weeks since the previous recording. You know, it's only episode four, so I never ever want to go that long with that episode. Just a massive time management mistake on my part led to that. I don't want to bore people with it, just want to get into the gameplay, but just know that it shouldn't really happen. Now, if you're watching my other series, you probably it probably didn't really affect you at all. The uploads have been relatively consistent on the channel. It's just the, <laughs> like I said, we went too long with that episode. So. I've been busy though, in between episodes I went around and named every single district and most of the main roads that we have. Sorry, all the main roads we have, most of the roads we have. Some of the smaller streets on the sides, we just left them as they are. And I thought we should reintroduce the city to people just very quickly because it has been a while. Just get everyone up onto the same page and then I've got a kind of laundry list of things I want to get through today with a very big one at the end which is doing trains. Uh, well, at least laying the foundations, laying the tracks on which we will follow into the future. Something like that. All right, so one of the first things then, we can start over with, so these district names aren't gonna change now, which is why I wanna get people familiar with it because I've also named a lot of the roads based off of the districts. So for instance, we have our industrial sector here, which is now called Salford, and then we have Salford Road, which kinda is a main road that sort of leads over to that area. Similarly, we have Westgate, which has our high school and our college together, and then we have the Westgate Link, which links the Brambles, Millfield, and Westgate, Ashfall, it links all these kind of areas together. It's a kind of big main road, and then it also feeds out to the highway. We now have, instead of calling it, a, excuse me, a highway, we have the motorway, the M1 motorway, and that feeds then into the A10. I just thought A10 would be kind of, instead of going A1, might as well call it A10. So the A10 road to Blackwater, and then we have another road that would be around here, the A12, and so on and so forth. So I've gone around and really tried to thoughtfully name my roads. I'm not saying it's perfect. Some things probably don't make sense, and you can't determine the size of the roads, right? As far as I know, unlike City Skylines 1, so we're kind of stuck with like what we get, so just got to name them as best as we can. Um, so I just thought I would reintroduce some of the districts, and uh, just so everyone can be re-familiar, because I'm just going to be naming, you know, when I'm referencing things, I'll often just be going by the name that's in the district, so, so we know what we're talking about. So, to start us off, we have the Brambles. This is obviously our row housing, which we started the game with, tightly packed together. It's actually kind of named off of a estate that's not too far away from where I live, and I always thought it was kind of quite an interesting name. Brambles, I think, are like the thorns and the prickly bits of bushes and things, and it can be like really annoying to have to cut through and stuff, so I just thought that was kind of nice, a good fitting name for this kind of area. It's difficult to kind of cut through with all the cars parked. They're all kind of jammed in together, very densely packed. It's the Brambles. I mean, that's what it is. So then we have Lilac Acres, which I've just kept the name the same. That's going to be one of our smaller estates. Uh, hopefully people don't mind the sun is setting. I kind of think it looks quite nice, but at the same time, it may be a little difficult to view things from a certain height. So I'll try not to move the camera too much as we look at these places, so that might confuse people. Next over, we have Millfield. So that's our commercial, kind of central commercial area for the Brambles Lilac Acres. And it actually contains a little bit of offices as well over on the sides here, next to where our crematorium is. And there are actually a few people living here in more high, dens uh, high density houses, right? Medium density houses. So it's worth noting that it's commercial, but there are actually a few people living in there as well. It's quite cool, because if you select it, you can actually see then, you know, residents and who lives there and everything. I think I'm too zoomed in to actually see that tooltip. Great. I guess that's UI scaling not really working. Never actually noticed that before. Anyways, next over we have Salford, the big industrial area. Now, a lot of people in the comments were saying, like, this place, and that was actually a common suggested name. I like that name. Um, so that's going to be moved in the future somewhere across the river. And we're going to be doing a lot 
of planning, forward planning, to do with that. Of course, we have nine map tiles available to us now. We're on the cusp of actually reaching a new milestone, Busy Town, which is going to give us a cash injection. We're going to be able to do some ore mining, specialized ore mining, not just the, I guess, coal and things like that, but actual, uh, like, minerals, I guess, mineral mining and things. I'll have to see what it's actually called to get it right. And then we can have the gated community policy, which a few people thought would be good for lilac acres. Uh, next over, we have Ashfold. So Ashfold, again, is just a very similar sort of small little uh, residential area, low-density housing, kind of spaced out. Then we have Broadfield. Broadfield's actually an area really close by where I live, again. Uh, and I just thought it was a cool name for this area just because it is broad. It goes, it stretches across. It's one long district that goes across. And of course, it'll probably extend in the future a little bit. And then we have Westgate. Westgate is going to be home to our high school and our element, um, college, excuse me. So high school, college, as well as a little bit of uh, residential living on the sides, mostly the student accommodation and some commerce in there as well. So a bit of an everything district in a way. Uh, there's actually no policies on that right now. So this is one of the things I was a little worried about with certain... Wow, the lighting just changed. With certain districts, some of the things I've been worried about is you can see that the line of a district goes across the middle of a road. And when you're painting out a new area, one of the snapping options is to snap to the middle of the road. It's like the default. So it, it brings all the districts up in line with each other really greatly because they snap to the mid, midpoint of a road. So two districts joining each other both have half the road. So that's made me wonder though, if the line is on a road from two different districts, right? There's a district here on the left and another one here on the right. If I was to put a policy on that district, such as banning heavy traffic, does it apply to the road? Or do you have to fully go over the road with a district to then apply that? That's what I would think, but I haven't actually tested it and I don't know, so that's just been one of the things I've been worried about. Sorry, we'll turn back on nice and bright daytime now. All right, so we're at, that was quarter past four. It really is like the UK right now, the way the sun is setting at a quarter past four. We're definitely entering into winter here. When it hits midnight tonight, we'll be moving over into November. It's just cool to see. We might get our first snowstorms and things like that. Um, so I just wanted to address some of that stuff. Hopefully um, people can kind of let me know. But yeah, so just really quickly, we've done some policies. So we have speed bumps in the Brambles. Millfield will have the parking fee. We had that before. We're going to... Oh, no, it's already increased to 30, so that's fine. We've got recycling and speed bumps again in Lilac Acres. Our industrial area has the energy consumption awareness policy on. Ashfold doesn't actually have anything. We should put something in there. Speed bumps, because it's a little local area. They don't need recycling, that's fine. I think they're okay to have roadside parking as well. Broadfield is also similar. I think a roadside parking fee is totally fair. Uh, they, they don't need one, but speed bumps is okay. However, this would be where I'd be a little concerned. Although not really, actually, I suppose in this part, but we've got a main road going through here. It's actually called Main Street. This street does go through, pretty much cuts through the center of the town. So that's a nice one for Main Street, I think. And, uh, Main Street probably has speed bumps right around here, but I suppose that's actually okay, you know, because they are cutting through a residential area, so I'm not too miffed about that. And then, what's the last one? Westgate. So Westgate, then, is a bit of an everything district, as we mentioned. Doesn't actually have any policies, because I've been too afraid to put anything on it, except for, we do roadside parking, I think, and we'll bump that up to 30 as well. Now, another thing I want to do is, with the regular parking, I'm going to put them up to about 15 in this location, because they're getting quite full. And then we've got two parking areas here, which we'll also put up to about 15. So we're just charging, squeezing them a little bit, a little bit more for the parking. And we're just going to increase taxes ever so slightly as well. 2% more. So it's still quite low, generally speaking. Although I guess it's becoming like mid-tier. But between 6 and 8%, I think that's fair. Totally fair. They've had, they've had it good for a long time. They're super happy about everything still. And everyone's wealthy, apparently. Oh my god, we've just witnessed a car, witnessed a car accident. Oh my god! They're face down at the back of the car. I mean, I don't know why that's funny, but it kind of is. Now, this actually is a great segue because this area, you'll notice, has traffic. And uh, I've noticed a few things with this. So these car parks, these ones in particular, the medium car park, don't have a fence around them. If we look at the large car park, we've got this fence that goes naturally around it. So cars can only come in and out of the area that's the designated entry point. Whereas with the medium car park, they can actually come in from pretty much wherever they want, like this guy right here. And a lot of people have been using this to bypass going through here. Look at this guy. He's just gone straight through. He's not even parking. He's just going through. Even the buses are doing that, I've noticed. This bus here, I guarantee he's going to take a hard right. Because it what? To avoid the junction? You're a madman. <laughs> so we're going to try and fix that. 
And I've noticed that that is happening over here, which is causing a lot of congestion because people are coming out of one, two, three, four different spots. Five, if you count the actual road they're supposed to. So I'm going to push this over. I think the only way to prevent this happening is to either go with a larger car park that has a gated fence on it, or just push it far, far enough away from the uh, road that they're not allowed to do it, or like there's a, um, a pathway in between that can like kind of cut them off. He's noticing a little bit of weird issues. When you zoom out, you can see the wheels kind of turning on cars like in a really weird way. Anyways, right, so we can hop into the actual gameplay now. So the first solution for the buses is an easy enough one. We can put down a waypoint that will manually, you know, force the buses to follow us in that direction. So they're not going to go through the car park. Can't do anything about other people doing it, though. So I'm just going to have to leave it as is. But at least the buses won't do that. It's a bit better. Um, but I'm going to have to look into that in the future. I do think that this is... we got to do something about that if it starts causing more problems. All right, so we'll hop back over here. And let's get fixing this one as well. So, I'm just going to pause this. We're going to pop these out to the side somewhere. Now, the trees, I think, should come back when we move it. All right, so we're left with Brook Lane and some pathways and stuff. So, we're just going to get rid of all this. And these houses, I've noticed, have fences right up against the back of them. So, the car park's going to go right up against the back of them. Hopefully, they can just deal with it. So, if we were to use this as a guide and just see how many tiles in we have to go, so that's three, it's about five, five deep. And the reason I want to do this is this road is a three lane asymmetrical road that actually has a kind of invert point here where it becomes three lane but in the opposite direction. Uh, we want to kind of use that as a midpoint here and bring this across. I don't know if I can do it from this side though. I can actually. Hopefully, these will fit back in here. Sunset Lane, what a beautiful name. So, we can turn back on snapping. Can we slam that in there? Yes, we can. Oh, it fits beautifully. Okay, great. All right. So, we've pushed them way in behind these houses. It is technically an alleyway road, so it shouldn't be too bad. And we've actually managed to leave some of the trees intact, which is nice. But the bushes are gone. Now, what I was thinking is a pathway that goes... That kind of... Well, we don't seem to need it, actually. I've pushed them in pretty far. But we'll put a pathway in here anyway. All right. Snapping to existing geometry. Does that work? Oh, it does. Great. All right, so that's the pathway in. Looks decent. I don't know if we can actually connect it up to the edge of the alley, if people would actually walk that, but it'd be nice if they did. Yeah, it actually does, amazingly. All right, cool. Uh, so I reckon what we could do with this now is maybe create our little grass patches and stuff using the clipping tool or whatever, the um, developer mode. Or actually, I guess we'll just search grass and manually put in our own grass. I've noticed that, you know, as buildings level up, they redefine their borders and, you know, they get fresh graphics and stuff. So the grass that you extend out from certain buildings, you know, that work is going to be undone. Whereas if you put down your own grass, then obviously that's just going to stay. So I recommend doing that. All right, so that's pretty good. Um, yeah, we could do a little bit more just on the edges here. All right, that adds a little bit more in. I'll just add some trees as well to break it up. Now, something I've also been thinking about to make this easier to get in and out of, I think I'll just make it a small roundabout. But unfortunately, one of my pathways is in the way, so I'll just cut that for a moment, make this a small roundabout, and then readjust the pathway. Hmm. Looks like part of Evergreen Street has to go if we want to do this properly, so... All right, that went smoothly back in. And then we'll just see if we can do the roundabout now. Yeah, just a really small baby one. <laughs> All right, and see if I can put my pathway back in. Great, no problem. All right, so now some bushes as well, just in further, kind of break it up a bit. I find adding them in little groups kind of make it look a little bit more natural rather than just having single bushes spaced out like really far all the time. Little clusters can look a, maybe a bit better. All right, there we go. We'll have to leave it. So we do have a lot of traffic coming in. I mean, I guess it's 6 p.m. People coming home from their commute. Uh, not much we can do about that. But I'm hoping that this eases things in future. I did notice that this caused a lot of issues. 
So I think maybe the next commute it'll be a little bit better now that they've only got one point to come out rather than a multiple. Um, something else though I think they're missing here is actually traffic lights. There are none, so we'll just give them traffic lights here as well. Oh, and one other thing I've been thinking could be good is a one-way road in, just here on the left. Uh, just to direct the flow of traffic in that way. So that's Olive Street, just go that way. Just If you're in the left lane, well, you can go straight or left, but now if you're in the right lane, you can get back out. Yeah, I think that should work a little bit better. We'll have to give it a bit of time. There's also, you know, complications with certain crossings and things nearby, but I think we'll be okay from here on. Let it flush, and then we'll check it. You know, it's 6 p.m. We'll check it 6 p.m. tomorrow or in the morning commute as well. All right. Um, so that was pretty much all I wanted to do for helping traffic. <laughs> we'll kind of just have to feel it out and see how it goes. Now, if you have a look at public transport, um, we've actually got pretty decent usage now. So I've named the... People, that, people like the naming conventions generally the bus routes, although there's some um, suggestions. I am going to be adding in more bus routes in between episodes, so I'll change these just ever so slightly, but especially as the town grows. So these are kind of temporary for the size we're at now. What I'd like to do is have clockwise and counterclockwise routes. And people said, like, well, what's the point of that? You know, if you could have a route that goes from Broadfield, Ashford to Salford, why would you then have one that goes the opposite direction? Because it's just going to loop around anyway. What's the big deal? Well, the point is that if you have, if you create counterclockwise loops like that, uh, if someone is here in Ashfold and they wanted to go to Broadfield, they don't have to go to Salford and then back. They can just go straight. They can get on the one that's on their side. Now, it's interesting though. There's a good few comments saying like, well, you know, you could also think of bus routes because you're doing left-hand traffic or left-hand drive. Um, try to make them take as few right turns as possible. So there's two different ways of thinking there, isn't there? Because it's like, well, you could have counterclockwise routes, so obviously one route is going to be doing right turns a lot and one isn't. Or you could just have very deliberate pathways that make sure you only ever take left routes so you're crossing over as little traffic as possible. That one sounds pretty good, but I just, I don't know, I've used counterclockwise routes in City Skylines 1 and it worked really well, so I kind of just want to use that here. But I do think if we have more bespoke routes that go really far, like the industrial one that takes you all the way out to the farms and the forestry and the stones, uh, the, the the quarries, I think those ones aiming to take as few right turns as possible, that would make the most sense for them. Now, I've just seen this happen. This happened before, and I just saved and reloaded and it fixed itself. What's happened is it doesn't look like it, but the grid has actually changed. But I don't know why. Yeah, something just changed it. But repaving it seems to, or rezoning it seems to be fixing it. How weird is that? I didn't even touch it, so this is a weird bug going on there. Uh, but speaking of zoning, we've got all this demand for all these different things, right? Everything's great. Demand for everything. A lot of students, actually. And right now, population and unemployment, 2.7%. Not too bad at all. Still nice and low. Um, so we have our college here, now with 325 students. The high school with 127. And then we have the elementary school with 626. Now the thing with that is a lot of people are probably going to school from over in Broadfield. Don't really want them to be doing that. I'd rather they have their own elementary school now because there's enough people here that they shouldn't have to cross the town to get over there. Even though they could just take Main Street and get pretty much right down there, it still just adds a bit of clutter to the roads. So I think, you know, they're going to grow out this way anyway, so it seems to make sense. Give them their own high, uh, elementary schools. That's kind of what I want to do next. But just before that, I wanted to build out zone a couple extra buildings and let people filter into the town while we're building out that area so <clears throat> this is actually a I, I always hover over that but it doesn't tell you it is a hybrid right it's the mixed housing and it's pretty big but we're just gonna mirror it on this side so mixed housing again so shops on the bottom housing on the top like so a lot of houses in there 30 households and then we have one of these big big bad boys at the back a hundred households now, I noticed in the zoning requirements, we've got availability of jobs, lots of jobs for people, taxes are good, students, got a lot of students, people are looking for accommodation who are just students and want to be near schools and stuff, so ideally, if we give them housing next to one at this area, this seems like, to me, it makes sense to provide medium density and high density because we have students and students next to schools. That's my logic on that. Now, they do also need jobs or, you know, it's obviously a mix of demands in there, but hopefully we meet some of those demands by providing them 
Uh, at least one of the categories is what they want. So we'll just go with, again, some me medium density housing here. Four by four, so it's not too big. And then on the low rent housing, do a nice big fat one in there. It's not quite as big as the one behind it, but we should get something interesting out of it all the same. Yeah, one nice big house. Now we have the under construction percentage, which is kind of nice to see since the game has been patched a few times. A um, couple things, a couple things I wanted to do with this area. People are actually very flattering with this. They said it, it quite complicated, but cool, <laughs> which is nice. Uh, and I like it. Oh, and it was pointed out to me, actually, that we have homeless in the city. Uh, where are they? Here they are. Now, you can't see them in this park, but they have tents and shacks and things up and running. Did I? F I can't remember if we... No, that was on a stream. Yeah, on a stream of a different save uh, two weeks ago. We looked at someone who was homeless in a park of mine. They actually said they were wealthy, but they were homeless and they were a child. So I don't know what was going on there. But um, yeah, I can't actually find the people who live here. When you do see homeless, they always appear in parks. And normally when you see them, you can click the park and it says residents because they're living in the park, I guess. And uh, it'll tell you who they are and what's up with them. But I can't really see anything there. And I don't really know why we'd have homeless necessarily. So I don't know what you can do about it other than just combat it with housing and welfare. Um, so we haven't built the welfare at, um, education, the welfare building, administrative building yet. Is it in here? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't even unlocked it yet, actually. So that could be part of it. Well, we'll, we'll get them that. I don't know where it's going to go just yet. Right. So in sorting out this area, the first thing I wanted to do was just thicken up the island in the middle here. And that's going to get rid of the cars parked on either side. And we'll just have to widen the path here. I'm going to put grass on this side because it's next to the park and stuff. And then just widen the path on this one. Only way we can get rid of parking. I have to do the same up here to prevent them parking up there. And I don't have to do the same here, but we can maybe just put a divided road in the center of this one. So create a division line in the middle there. People are actually allowed to do U-turns. That's not ideal there. So here, they're being told to merge in. You can see the arrow. They're being told to merge in, which is fine. But if I do this, they're going to be told to... U they they're able to U-turn. So maybe if I tell them you can't take a right turn. Yeah, now you're being told to merge on the left. It's actually kind of maybe better. We'll see as we build this road further down. Yeah, that's fine. Now we've got still got parking on the side. That's what we wanted to get rid of. So continue that island further out. There we go. Maybe a bit more seamless. A little bit. So that's the A10, but it becomes Round Rock Road. Round Rock goes really far around, pretty much around the entire town. Yeah, so I'm going to have to clean that up. But that I did actually try. It was really difficult, but we'll, see, we'll have to give it a shot. These things need to be done at some point. Um, just seeing as we're on a bit of a zoning kick at the moment, we've got um, demand for offices, labor availability already, so... If we have the jobs ready to go, or the people who are educated enough ready to go, then we might as well get them started. So just going to block that area out there. Is that what I wanted to do? Yeah, I guess, well, I guess so. And then we'll just zone in this portion here, a little bit of extra offices. Not going to go too deep with it, just by four. Get some houses in there. Yeah, I just didn't know why that this is blocked off from having zoning attached, but for some reason it is. Right, so that's going to meet the demand pretty quickly there. High skill labor availability. So th there was some labor av availability, but not for everything, right? Because if we check our education, of course, we only have as far as a college. So we're starting to get some well-educated as they will start to graduate. And people were saying, like, you can prepare for that graduation wave by having ready-to-go blocks of offices and stuff. All right, so... Got our extra houses in. Oh, cool. They actually happen to be the same color. They look very similar. That's nice. That really worked out. Nice block of shops. And then there's a pathway that will go in behind them. So let's continue that pathway over this way. Hopefully it doesn't break the zoning. As long as you don't connect it as a crosswalk, it shouldn't sh shift any zones. So typically it stays okay. Now we don't have to worry about the uh, grass. We can do that at some other point. Or I'll do it between episodes. How are we liking that? I mean, pretty big buildings, I guess. But a nice high density patch there. Medium to high density patch. I like it. All right, let's uh, build out the back of this now. So we'll flatten the terrain here. Just going to grab the ground and then just push that all the way up to the edge, creating harsh cliff, which was here before, basically. So nice and flat. So we want to add some more student accommodation. Accommodation. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people are using this road. We're going to have to cut them off. So got to completely delete the road. 
and then we have to push the cliff a little further in if we want to create this retaining wall. Okay, because the roundabouts are actually, this one's slightly higher up than that one. Right, so let's grab that medium road again. It was an asymmetrical road, five lane asymmetrical. We'll keep it straight. We'll start from the center point of this one, I guess. Just bring it to the center point of that one. Hope for the best. It looks like it's created a retaining wall the whole way. The incline is, or decline or whatever, is negative 1.3%. That's pretty good. All right, we'll lock that in. So we've got our retaining wall. That was actually super easy, but it's not that easy. I'll show you why, because I did try this beforehand. If you go to upgrade this, because I want to snap this side to being three lanes, right? So we want to invert it. It won't snap properly, and it won't create the retaining wall when I flip it, because it's almost like it's flipping the road. Like it's literally flipping it so that the retaining wall will be on the inside now. So it's not very clever, I guess, that way. Now, I don't know. We've talked about this before, right? This is the default snapping here. Let's try change this, right? So the first one is just toggle all snapping on or off. Let's do just existing geometry. So that one works. But it doesn't. <laughs> not quite. So as you can see, the fence wall is on the inside now, the retaining wall uh, and its subsequent fence. So unfortunately, what we have to do is just build the road again in the other direction. But now that we have this one to snap onto, it should be hopefully a bit more straightforward. And if we build it from left to right, it should give us what we want. Just city skylines things, huh? So there we go. And we've kept our crosswalk in place. We have three lanes on the approach here and three lanes on the approach here. Now, I don't know what this means because <laughs> it doesn't look quite right. I mean, there's some effort made, it looks like, by the crosswalk. Maybe I could get rid of that crosswalk, actually. Oh, yeah. That would actually create put our line back in there. Should I? I don't know. Maybe it's fine. Let's leave it for a while and see what you guys think. What I'm planning on doing is having some sort of bridge that comes down, though, for people, similar to what we did over on this side, right? We have our... Um, basketball courts here and our sort of small little walkway bridge that leads up kind of want a similar thing coming down this way but also a way of getting up here onto this retaining wall now we've got a problem which is this roundabout doesn't have a retaining wall built into it i don't know if you can do that so we just have this massive mud wall here can't push it in any further can't do anything with it so it might just have to stay until mods or something in the future helps me with that I do think if I rebuild this road and connect it as a retaining wall, then the roundabout will automatically link the two sides because you can see it made an effort. It did make an effort here. So there might be something to that. Um, but I'm just not sure because this, this, you can't like upgrade this. So I don't, I don't know, you know, this is part of the reason why I didn't do it in the first place. But I do agree that I think overall it's a good thing to have. All right. And similarly for this one, right? Same thing would have to happen here. Okay, anyways, with all that out of the way now, let's zone some housing. So we have the low rent housing, or we could go again with the medium density. I feel like the medium density would probably be a bit better. Let's just actually do a little bit extra with the roads first. So I'm gonna grab this one, bring it out just a bit further over to the right. Okay, our zoning actually does look okay. Yeah. And I'm just gonna cut that one here bring this up okay so now if we cut the pathway along the side we've got nice big blocks that we can use here I don't know if I can bring that up even further just bring it right to the edge of the thing there yeah a bit better all right cool so that's uh, we've got pretty good zoning now to work with and then we'll have to create gaps and stuff so we can bring those pathways down in between give them plenty of room to get up as well because the incline would be really high it wouldn't be i think someone said it's not ada approved if it's like over nine percent or something all right and that makes sense i mean if you're a wheelchair trying to get up there that would be pretty rough um i mean this one you know that, that doesn't look too bad to me but i don't know what the actual legal standard is i guess uh right medium density housing let's go so four by fours seems reasonable we could go five by five Let's see what they fit nicely. Five by five there. Hmm, pretty good. Tell you what, we'll just shave a little bit off on the sides here. I 
That gives us a bit more of a gap towards this area, which might have to be modified or changed a little bit more. So that's where three different buildings can come in. Hang on. Oh, made a little mistake. Yeah, that's better. All right, cool. And then in here, we'll have the... Uh, making mistakes left, right, and center. So this should be the medium density. Yes. And that's going to be the low-rent housing. So the low-rent housing could be really big. Five by five. Maybe another one in here. Five by five. Gap in the middle with a path going through. Can we do that, actually, centrally? We can, but should we? Too preoccupied with whether or not we could. We didn't think whether or not we should. I think that might be better, and then a path can go straight up this way. Yeah. All right, I, I think so. You know, who the hell knows? <laughs> it's not like we can forward plan this or think cleverly or something. All right, so let's get rid of that pathway now and behold our creation. So that building's different. Don't like that. Want it to be the same. Ah, shouldn't have got rid of the pathing path so soon because this has changed our zoning, which is why that building came in that way. All right, so that building's probably not going to come in again for a while, but it will come in. It's just the demand has completely gone away. All right, cool. We've got our three buildings. So that's at the back of the college. So like I said, I'm hoping that the students really take that one. I'm hoping. I'll let time go back to normal. All right. So while we're waiting for that to kind of grow in, see how it looks and add some trees and things. Actually, one last thing would be that I was thinking pa a parking lot here would be good. To give them kind of their own extra parking as they come around the corner. Now, I don't know if we can fit it in. Just the small one. Oh, maybe. It looks... Oh, it's so close. I think maybe. Hang on. Turn it sideways. Where's the road connection? There. Just turn off all snapping. Bring it right to the edge. As carefully as possible. Oh. Yes. Oh. Hey. Milestone 7 unlocked. Love to see it. 1.6 milli in the bank. And an extra 9 map tiles and 7 development points. We are rolling in it now. 18 map tiles total. Can't believe that fit in there. It actually doesn't, <laughs> but we did it. All right, cool. Whack it up. I wish you could say it's like select operating districts. It's like this is uh, reserved parking for these people, actually. That'd be kind of interesting if you could do that. Not a fan of the way it looks out the back, but I like the front. Consider, you know, for what it is. <laughs> oh, it's kind of a cool shot, actually, seeing the big um, drill thing, excavator thing in the background. It's quite cool. All right, um, so yeah, let's get uh, landscaping. So what we'll have to do, I guess, so the plan is to sort of have an elementary school somewhere here, and I wanted to unlock soccer fields. So we have large parks and sports parks already, but the large sports parks is what's gonna give us a soccer field. Seeing as we're going for a sort of a UK Ireland town, soccer field seems like it would make sense in and around this community here by Broadfield. Um, so I thought maybe somewhere like here, elementary school nearby, and then my overall plan for the train is to have a train station somewhere like here that moves up and follows, sort of follows the coastline all the way across and over straight over to, over that way. So that's a, maybe a weird, I don't know, but I couldn't really think of many other places. And I've been thinking a lot about where are the bridges going to go? No pedestrian access. How is that even possible? No, I'm not going to do anything about that. <laughs> if your company falls to bits, that's your phone, your own problem. You have access from what I can see. All right, anyways, let's get back out here. So to get back on track, that was a bit of a side quest, just to explain some of the economy stuff that I've been trying to look at, trying to understand, but uh, it's still a bit trial and error. Alright, so I've created a bit more of a flat plane out here. It's sort of still a bit temporary because there's going to be a train line running on this and we'll have to create a second tier down. So it might be either a retaining wall or just like a sort of a cliff <laughs> with uh, the train line running along the side of it to get out. I hope that idea works. It's going to kind of have to. 
Um, all right, so let's just continue this road out. So what we want to do, I've thought about yeah, making this a an asymmetrical road, but I don't think we'll be able to fit it into that roundabout because it's touching pathways on either side. I could maybe remove the pathways, see what happens. So let's turn on those contour lines and see how far I can really go. Somewhere out to about here for now. In fact, can we do zoning cell length, please? Keep it in increments of... Eight. Although it seems to be doing it in threes for some reason, but okay. So 300 meters, let's go with that. All right, looking good. So to do an asymmetrical road here, it won't let me because, yeah. And it won't let me do it the other way around either. It does look like it's just the pathways that are blocking it. So let me try to get rid of those. Yeah, so some of the bushes went. That's fine. It's quite a quite a big roundabout, I guess, here, but it is Main Street, after all. Alright, so we've got a nice big flat patch of terrain to work with. So I was kind of thinking, like, yeah, uh, elementary school plus a soccer field, basically. So elementary school, we'll have to gauge the kind of size of this thing. So I'm just going to temporarily just pop this in at the back. We'll have to move it. It's going to cost me a little extra to do that, but... We'll do a playground in at the back. Yeah, this would fit. So there's a uh, junction here. I'm thinking of just extending this junction over. Right, so that'll be our soccer field. So it's right up against the edge of the road here. I'm okay with that. We've actually got the variant, unfortunately, that doesn't have... You can get one with sand. This one's more like gravel. Uh, so now I'm going to move this and just try to place it in right behind that. So that looks like they're all part of the same sort of build. See, so yeah, I feel like now the high school, the sorry, I keep calling it a high school, but the elementary school goes right out into the back of the soccer field. So maybe it's where the kids learn to play during the day or whatever, but maybe some local teams play during the night or the evenings or whatever. It's kind of how it was in my community actually thinking about it. My primary school was built right next to a soccer, well, it was a GAA pitch because I'm from Ireland. Um, but yeah, the teenagers would be the ones that had the serious games. And that gives us room for parking as well in here. Now, I don't know what kind of parking we can fit in here. Can we use the large? Large is too large. Medium fits. Does it fit sideways? It does. We could put two in. So it obviously creates this patch of nothing here in the back. Maybe I could just put some trees or something in there. It's usually the default go-to. Some grass. They can still get their extension wing, but they won't have room for this now. I'm okay with that, though. They don't need a children's clinic. They'll be fine. Didn't realize I was playing Frostpunk. Actually, has anyone seen Frostpunk 2's teaser trailer? Oh my days, that looks good. Cannot wait. Long story short, it just looks incredible. But it could, it's all trailer stuff, so who knows? You never know, really, until we see some proper gameplay. It could just be in-engine stuff, and we don't know fully exactly what it looked like. But I'm just I'm stoked for what I've seen so far. All right, so I like this area. It's coming together kind of nicely. We could increase maybe the parking fee here just a bit, maybe up to 20. But yeah, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you check that out. That and Manor Lords and Falling Frontier, those are three games I'm super, super stoked for. So all smaller developers as well, so super happy for, to give them support as well. All right, I think we can go with the large playground actually, it's not that big. So that would allow for a path to come in between the two. Yeah, let's try that. It might be throwing a bit too much in this area, maybe. But I'm willing to give it a shot. All right, and then we'll just clean this up. As we've done before, we'll add some grass and things like that to make it look a bit nicer. So I could probably just extend the elementary school's grass further out. Yeah, it looks like the underlying like texture and the orientation of the texture is just preset in the world. It doesn't matter where you start from, but that just happens unless you're building it off of a building. But if you just put it down yourself, you're gonna end up with like yeah, weird, uneven looking lines can't have that that would drive me crazy so we'll get rid of it all right now it obviously looks super bare but put some trees down some bushes could look kind of nice maybe we'll get a bit creative with the bushes maybe do a cluster again all right so just have a big cluster of bushes there and then maybe just some smaller ones that go along that's the kind of thing where it's like if we had some picnic tables and stuff i'd love to add some extra things in there so i don't know what kind of trees these are but if we could copy those ones that'd be nice or maybe do some extra bushes I'll just probably leave it as is. All right, cool. 
We do have this big open area right in front of the elementary school. Oh, I just realized actually, maybe this should be a one-way road, thinking about it, rather than an alleyway. I get a little overzealous with my alleyways, but something like that would probably be better. Yeah, that's a little bit nicer, I think. All right, um, what next? I think I'll keep this as the asymmetrical road even here. So that just continues its look and feel all the way until this point where it comes back out to being a four lane road. Quite a nice little area. I reckon then we need to build an extra grouping of houses out this way. And then after that, we can start looking at the uh, train station. Oh yeah, I've seen this before. I don't know what this is. No car access to any of the what? Little modules of fields. Don't know if that's a problem, don't know if it's going to go away, but that's a thing. And then we have no pedestrian access over there, so the, the game is melting down, basically. But hopefully that just goes away. If not, I just guess I just re-put down the field. What are we up to now? 440. So what I wanted to do was just quickly select the operating districts of this elementary school. So we want to say Broadfield, Westgate, Ashfold. That's where people should go to school. And similarly over this one, the Brambles, Millfield, Little... Sorry, Lilac Acres, and I don't think anyone lives in Salford. There's no harm in just clicking it anyway. Um, yeah, I guess just to fill this area in, just to complete it, I'm just going to patch that with grass. Alright, there we go. So now it actually looks like it's blended a little bit better with the actual area, rather than just a regular path standing out in the middle of nothing. So happy enough with that. Uh, just gonna tidy up a few extra little bits and then we'll resume. Alright, there we have it. Looking a lot more clean. Quite happy with how it's coming together. Now the last portion of this will be to do the residential estate here, and then a little bit of a commercial zone on this side uh, to see how that goes. So I'm just gonna basically go into podcast mode and think about this for a bit and then see how we can like lay it out, because I have no idea how it's going to be designed.
Alright, so there we have it. So the place has been zoned for a little while. Houses are just starting to appear now, so I thought I would save you the wait. So some of them have just, you know, reached full construction. Some others are still getting built. Um, so effectively, this is what we got. You know, it's mostly just low-density residential pretty much everywhere, except for here, where I decided to add in some small apartment blocks. So these would be the medium-density housing, but I zoned them to be 3x3 three three to keep them nice and small, basically. So I kind of like that. You know, where I live at the moment, it's a development where it's just all... By the way, there's a couple things, actually. So I live in this very small new development. I live in an apartment. And it's mostly houses, but every now and then there are exactly these. About four... I'd say about four-story little apartment blocks dotted around in between the houses. And they actually match the architecture of the houses, which is quite nice. Like, they use the same kind of bricks and stuff. So they blend very seamlessly into them, which is quite cool. But you can kind of tell, it's like, they're usually on the corners, so it's like bigger blocks of buildings on these certain corners, and then the further out you go, you have either, you kind of have some row housing, but not necessarily as packed as that, just regular semi-detached type houses, I guess. And then you've got some that are off on their own with bigger bespoke areas. Anyway, where was I going with that? Oh yeah, so basically I just wanted to add in some of these, because I thought like, oh, that's kind of quite realistic, but also add lots of cul-de-sacs. Now, some people had said to me, I, I think it was literally two people I think mentioned it in the previous video said something along the lines of cul-de-sacs have been like totally outlawed because they uh, cause more crime because they're dead ends so people know that like they can see where people are coming in from or something I'm sure that's true I, you know I, I don't debate the information this person gave me but the development I've moved into lately it's maybe four to five years old or something like that it's full of cul-de-sacs everywhere so it might just be an English thing you know um, and an Irish thing. I'm guessing in America maybe it's become less frequent or something. It sounded like that's where the person was from just based on some of the words they used in their comments. So, I don't know, I just thought I would address that. I like using cul-de-sacs. I don't see a problem with it. As long as you only have a few houses, they can't ever get that busy and they all filter out. I don't think in the game it attributes anything to crime. It does, in theory, take longer to get to those places for police vehicles and stuff to get to. So, to some degree, there's some realism there. Uh, ah, so the mixed density housing has just come in now, but it doesn't quite look how I wanted it to. I might have to just kill these, unfortunately. Let's see if I can make them build the way I want. So I'm just going to get rid of this. Let's see? Oh no, why has that done that? <laughs> it was totally fine until a second ago, until I got rid of the zoning. Anyway, so what I wanted to do was something like this. 4x3, and let that come in. And then you just let time play to let them kind of come in separately. This one will just have to be on its own, I guess, on the end. All right, unfortunately, that's going to be the best I can do. So it's mixed zoning. I've got a pedestrian street running down the set there. It's like the most small, weak-ass, pathetic pedestrian street ever. But it's there. And uh, I was hoping to kind of extend some concrete or something on the sides to make it look kind of nicer. Now it's going between the buildings. It's not actually... Buildings aren't actually latched onto it. It's more just like a walkway through behind them. It's like a cut-through. Still thought it could be nice, because when these buildings actually come in, you'll see what they look like, and they have, like, space out the back for people to kind of cut through and stuff. I don't know if people do. I just thought they'd be nice there. Um, anyway, then I added a medical clinic. So, again, these guys could have their own operating district. So, Greystones, Broadfield, Westgate, Ashfold, and maybe this medical clinic can take care of uh, the Brambles, Lilac Acres, Millfield, and Salford, and see how that goes. So, that way they're divided up a bit more. Maybe that'll take care of things. We were actually making money for a while there until these houses came in. I guess the medical clinic as well has probably put a bit of more, bit more strain on things. But when people move in, I think tax-wise will probably be okay. At least there's a decent amount of shops now. So the idea was that this would be more shops in along the side here going down. Either mixed density or just more shops generally. I thought it'd be good because obviously people can move in, live up there. I, th I guess parking would be one other thing that we want to solve or give them access to. We did add two car parks there. That... That is a pretty decent amount, and there's two big ones up here as well. So hopefully that'll be okay. Alright, so, the road comes down straight along here. Now the goal, the, the plan, was to add this train station while we let these guys move in. Now for a train station, you have to, well, we have to unlock it first, so let's do that. <laughs> train. Alright, it's only one point actually, which is fine. So we have train category now. Transporting people and cargo on tracks is a viable method of mass transit. Fast and efficient. Right, so we can't actually place our first train station until we do our rail yard. Now, unfortunately, I hate to be a tease, we're not going to be running trains in this episode. It's more to lay, lay, uh, excuse me, lay the groundwork for it to know where it's going to go in the future. So as a 
concept. We're just going to place the rail yard wherever. We know that we're going to have to do it eventually. I'm not sure where it's going to go. I've really had a good think and look around the map, but I'm just not sure yet. So temporarily, we'll just place it somewhere out by the stone quarry. 150,300 XP. There it is. So, big building. You know, you really have to think about where that goes. Now that's a... Well, let's read about it. So, a large complex used for the storing, sorting, and maintenance of trains. It can be upgraded with extra tracks and a maintenance hall. So, the maintenance hall just snaps onto the rails themselves, and then you can add extra tracks out. Oh, it's already put it in there, that hologram right there. So, we've got, like, kind of, what, three sets? I guess, two or three sets. It's going to add another one. I think it just keeps going if you want to keep adding more, I think. Um, I've never really seen how this gets used, even when I played with it in uh, a bigger save. I'm just... a a bit kind of conf I mean I guess the idea is trains have to go there to get maintained I guess that's ultimately it but there's so many tracks I'm just not entirely sure what that's all for but either way um, I was thinking that you know the rail yard could probably just go off on the edge of the map somewhere but it would be nice to have there's a lot of services I'm banking on for the future water pumping stations wastewater treatment recycling centers um, industrial waste processing. These are big industrial complex buildings that provide services that you don't want to have in the center of your city. You want to have them some somewhere a bit further out. Now we have to bear in mind in this map, the wind is blowing, it's very hard to see, but northwest, or sorry, northeast. It's going off towards that direction and up over the mountains. It actually changes, it curves a little based on where it goes. So by the time it gets to here, it's pretty much directly pointing north, like almost entirely. So it's sort of swooping. It's really hard to see with this overlay, I guess. Can we, maybe I could do that and turn off the, if I just draw a little road, we can kind of show that maybe a bit better. So it's almost like doing that, yeah? That's kind of what the wind is doing. So based on that, it means that really we, you know, if I kind of want population to be sort of all out here, I would imagine on this side of the river. So that means that industry has to go kind of up here if we want it to be blowing away can't really have it anywhere over here because eventually it's it's going to be coming across so that's why even with 18 map tiles it's like well we need kind of like all this and a lot of this and then i need to link my uh motorway back up so that's got to go up here so that's kind of what we're looking at that's a, that's a lot of tiles <laughs> 62 out of 18 so even if i was to cut that down a lot and just try to use be really like crucial with what bits i want to use Still too much. Uh, it's 35, so I'm just waiting to keep pushing the town further and further so we can then really build that bridge across and do more with it. But we can still expand a little bit now. Um, so I know that down here, well, I don't know, but I, I'm confident that this is where the train station is going to go, somewhere right around here. So the rail line is going to have to wrap around to go parallel to the highway. Highway is probably going to have to go over the rail, I would imagine. Easier to bring a road over then have a incline or decline on the rail itself so we'll have to connect these three for sure that leaves us with 15. so this we'll push this one back just a little bit and even the motorway maybe in the future could come down just to give us more space or something but i'm thinking now that the rail yard's been placed we can do other things with it. actually i could turn that off thinking about it save the money Thirty thousand per month three thousand per month that's better huh hopefully we'll get a little bit better with the money Anyways, so yeah, train track goes can go across this road. I don't think that's too much of an issue. Although we could raise the road or lower it if we wanted to. It's an A road. It'd be fairly busy because there's an on and off ramp onto the highway, but only onto one side. It's not a main like kind of coming onto type road uh, from both sides. This one is obviously it's got a big interchange. Um, so yeah, rail again, something like this, right, going across. Maybe even we could bring it even closer to the highway, I guess, right? It just means that well, I'd have to change how these on and off ramps work. So we'll continue that. We'll come across to here, about to there. And then this is going to do hopefully a nice curve. A bit further up. Go up along here and then curve around. And continue on its first bridge over. That's the plan. So hopefully that illustrates it just somewhat. Um... Now, there's also cargo train terminals. It seems to, make, to me to make sense to have the cargo train terminal down here somewhere as well. So that's why the rail line will be running parallel to the highway. God, there's so many taxis. Look at how many taxis there are. It's crazy. Again, I'm not, I'm not really sure why there's so many taxis. They're not all mine. <laughs> They're coming from outside the city. Mine, I've, I've 20 out of 20. 
But I would assume it's to do with they need more bus routes. Like, where is everybody going? Colossal ore. Colossal ore, colossal ore. So two people are going to the same place. Right. Now, that's kind of interesting. There is a bus stop right there, but it, you have to go... See, to get to that bus stop, you would have to go all the way around all the other industries before you get to that one. So I feel like that's why people are probably getting some taxis there. Let's see where you're going. Are you going to Colossal Ore? No, you're going to Pomeroy. So you're getting out of the town. That's fine. What about you? Briar Rose Street. Hmm. Oh, that's where the... De this is what I was talking about. Holy crap. Look at everybody trying to get to... Destination Soccer Field. Soccer Field. Oh. <laughs> wow. A few people that we randomly click going to the soccer field. So the soccer field, obviously, we just put down in this episode right out here. And people are trying to get taxis over there. So yeah, this, I'll have to do this in between episodes because it be very tedious. But just like extend the bus routes down this way or create some new ones. Because I feel like you should be able to get the bus, man. And if we check our town and go to city policies, let's increase that taxi fare. To see if that can help a little bit with forcing people to get the bus. Anyways, I think I've talked enough. Let's start placing down this um, railway station. Or start doing the work, I guess, for the landscaping of it. Because it's gonna we're going to have to flatten out a large part of the terrain here so let's let's get to work really wow that doesn't feel like it so you're telling me this black line right here is the height of the top point of that cliff over there yes wow so it just shows you i mean this area is even more raised than there so this will have to be somewhat leveled out just a bit for the rail line so that the bridge isn't like raised as it goes over so you might be wondering like what about the water pumping station you know it's down here on this little thing it's a little alley that goes down to the bottom bit awkward bit of a weird place to put it um i'm thinking what we'll do instead is open up our water category purchase if i haven't got it already uh no we don't need the water treatment plant there's a, a ground aquifer down here water reservoir i guess or whatever it's called so we need a ground water pumping station the water output's going to be 75,000 per month. The water pumping station was 100,000 per month. But we still have 43,000 in excess. So I'm happy to just use the ground water pumping station for now. So I'm going to place it just somewhere over here and we'll give it its own road and stuff. In just a moment. I'm guessing this seems like a large deposit. You could probably have two on it, but we'll see how much we drain away. In the beginning. I'm, I don't really know how these work properly, so I've put it on the edge here. I don't know if it pulls from the entire thing or if it needs to be central. I guess I'll find out. Uh, but there's plenty of space here. We can always just change and move it. It's not really a big deal. So again, maybe snap the zoning cell length on this one. No, we won't. <laughs> I'll just go straight across there. That's a pedestrian road. That's an odd choice. There we go. All right, so they're hooked up. They've got power. Now the additional thing greatly reduce the amount of pollutants on the water intake and an extra pump it increases water intake okay cool i'll we'll leave that for now obviously still have the inaccessibility problem here still working at a good efficiency and everything i don't know what the deal is with that so now we can get rid of this water pump and say goodbye and uh yeah it doesn't really matter about the grass there and stuff so what we'll do now we can finally start like leveling this out a bit better so I'm choosing this piece of terrain. We're going to have to bring this along. Keep it as flat as we can for as long as we can. Wow, so there's our problem. So that's our target height. Man, it's so difficult working with terrain. God damn. So I need a train station somewhere here that can slowly raise up to the, that height to get across the river nicely. That's, that's a pretty tall order, pretty tricky. Now, I can obviously shape the river myself. I really need that extra space, but damn, it's, uh, that is tricky. Okay, so I made a really slow, small incline all the way up there. It's pretty, pretty well spaced. Now, if I was to look at, like, the rail itself, I feel like we need a parallel line and make it as close as pretty much possible. And let me just see, would this work, you know? All right, so there's our double, double line, because I feel like one of it might be for cargo and one for passengers. I just feel like it might get busy, so I thought best to have two. I don't know if that's a bad idea or not, but... That's what we're going with. So now I just have to... I mean, that's actually really not bad. I'm, I actually think that worked out. The slope tool, shout out, you know? That worked pretty good. Now, obviously, it looks like a disaster, but we'll blend this. <laughs> it's all in the blending.
I gotta say, I can't believe this actually went as smoothly as it did. That did not, was, this was done first try, basically. I'm, I'm really quite surprised. <laughs> now we still have to blend it down to the river, I guess. hooked up so we're actually connected to our first train station now the rails don't go anywhere so I'll have to do this in between episodes the next episode hopefully we'll actually get a train running for the first time and maybe we'll just yeah we actually can't reach the edge of the map unless we buy the tiles which is tempting to do so just buy a few tiles get to the edge and that way we can hook up a rail connection outside the map uh, we could temporarily hook it up to that rail yard before we end up moving it in the future Lots to think about. Really excited to see what you guys think as well. Before we wrap up, let's just see the game. Excuse me. And it's day-night cycle. So it's actually... I thought we'd hit winter, but we're not there yet. It is November. But maybe when we get to like 1pm or something, winter occurs. Alright, so some time has just been playing for a while. It's actually only 3pm on the clock and the sun has already set. So we're getting very close to winter now as we approach December, I guess first snows might be coming in and things like that. Quite happy with how things have been growing in. I, I was kind of rambling a little bit. I wanted to just keep it short, so I've cut myself out and then come back in here just to let people know what's going to be happening in the future. So the idea is to continue this rail, build the bridge across, and as we go across the river, I'll just brighten things up again. As we go across the river, this is where all the high density buildings are going to be. We've got the bigger roads now. We have the infrastructure and some of the money to start thinking bigger out that way. And then it's all about how do we get people from this side over to that side and vice versa. In the future, as I've mentioned many times, Salford's industry is going to be moved all the way up north. I would love it if by this kind of... Uh, is that Knoxbow Lake? Kind of, right? If we had up by this, we'd have... Um, docks and some ferries and some cargo industry that can use the river to get their industry out uh, and ship it. So that's kind of the idea and then obviously join the bypass over to the highway because the only way people have if they're coming from the north to get out to the west or the east is to come through my town right now so we have to provide them a bypass on both sides so they stop coming through my town clogging up my streets uh, which hasn't been too bad actually i mean it's only it's 3 30 right now but traffic is totally fine except for in the mornings that's when it gets worse uh, so six and six o'clock so the the morning commute and the evening commute back home Tends to have a lot of congestion, specifically on this road, actually, I would say Sunset Street, which did have a different name before. Sunset Street's actually kind of a nice name. Um, but yeah, you can see the flow of this one gets gets pretty bad, and the traffic volume gets really high at certain points during the day, so I have to try and give them redirect. It is a lot of people going through. You can actually see that, which is quite interesting. Um, all right, so I think that's going to have to be it. I look forward to seeing suggestions again. Apologies for taking so long with this one. We'll have the next episode out soon enough. I know what I want to do now. Uh, especially with building, we've just gone over it a million times, so we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.